there, Jenny T here with SimpleSewingProjects.com and I'm getting ready to make my London Shade Valances for my two windows and my office in my new home and I will be sharing with you all the uh, videos I will be taking as I make this balance. So make sure that you visit my Facebook page or visit my site simplesewingprojects.com so you can follow along on the blog. And uh, just in case you're seeing this out on YouTube, the link to my Facebook fan page is in the link below the video. So please go over there and like the fan page and follow it so that you can uh, get up to date on all the latest videos for this. Okay, so that would be awesome. So in this video, I want to talk to you about how I'm thinking about designing my London Shade Valance as well as how I'm going to measure it and, and, and just really make some decisions on you know, where the pleats are going to be. And this should help you when you are going to make your London Shade Valance, uh, you know, what you need to think about before you go out and buy your fabric, okay? because it's pretty important to make some decisions ahead of time before you go out and spend the money. So what is a London Shade Valance? Well, as you can see here, it looks a lot like a, a relaxed Roman shade, but what is significantly different is that a London Shade Valance has two box pleats, two inverted box pleats on the sides, well, near the sides, I should say, and then in a large expanse of fabric in between those two box pleats that creates a swag as the sides are pulled up along the pleats. Now notice that there's extra fabric here. These are all extra pleats. So if you were to undo this, it would probably fall the full length of the window, okay? And it's gathered up by rings and tied on both sides to look like a functional Roman shade, but really it's just tied up as a valance, okay? Um, you could make it functional, we're not going to learn that in the videos in this series, but there is instructions out in simplesewingprojects.com if you were to make this a functional London shade, you certainly could do that, okay? Notice that the box pleats come in a distance from the side edges, and again, there's always only two. Now, these are, and the, well, and I guess for some, ter for some terms to learn here, it creates butterfly tails on the side. That's what these are called, these butterfly tails here. A London shade is typically installed onto a board, so it is a wood board right here going across the top, and and it's usually attached to it by staples, and then it you know falls down here. Now this London shade is unique in that um, it's got the top portion of the shade you know, you know tacked together and decorated with buttons, which is really quite snazzy. But you don't have to do that; you can leave it open, and if you do, it would you would give it a much more relaxed look okay the 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 pleats would um would open up and uh so, you know the pleats would open up more like this okay and be more of a relaxed shape okay so that's a london shade and so the things that you need to consider are how thick how full you want it here at the bottom because the fuller that you want it the more fabric you should uh, basically extend down. So when we start talking about the uh, finished sewn panel length, it's not the length of, of the valance here, it's the full fabric length once you undo these hooks or these rings and it falls all the way down. Okay, that's the full length. So to keep that in mind, you'll need extra extra fabric below. And then it's an outside mount, so what you don't see here, because this photo is so straight, is that there is a depth to this board. So if I were to draw, um, you know, dimensional lines here, pencil here for you, you know, it would look more like that and <laughs> like that, all right? All right, that's pretty bad, but that's the depth of the board from the front edge of the board to the wall, okay? That's the depth of the board. And so you need to consider that when you're thinking about the width, the finish width of your valance, all right? So when you're, when you're using the numbers to calculate how much fabric you'll need, you'll first need to know how 
wide you want it once it's all pleated and sewn and installed. So you'll want it to be a little bit wider than your window frame. And you really can't tell in this photo, but it's about two inches on either side of this window frame. And so from, from you know here to here is the finished width of that valance. And then you'll want to make sure you account for the measurement of the depth of the board. Those are, these are called the returns. Okay, those are returns. And you still need to count that count, account for that too. So when we get into discussions about cut fabric and um, and and yardage formulas and that kind of a thing, this will all make a little bit more sense of why you need these numbers. Something else to consider when you're designing your London shade is placement of the fabric. This is a lovely wide stripe fabric. Notice that it is they have the one stripe perfectly centered in the middle. And notice also that they were very smart, the designer was very smart on where they created the box pleats so that it was it complemented the fabric very nicely. Okay, so they decided to make the center of one of these, the center of the box pleat, and then pull these over so that you have a nice, uh, you know, a nice continuity in the fabric. Uh, so that's that's really quite nice as well. You can also add in decorative flair by say not doing these buttons but instead putting in a contrasting fabric on the inside of the box pleat and notice also that in this particular style there's a nice trim of fabric along the bottom edge here and I think I'm going to do that as well so you learn how to do that I don't think I'm going to do contrasting fabric on the inside of the shade um, but you know I haven't made it my, my decision yet because I haven't bought my fabric so I might change my mind but I, don't, I won't probably do both I'll either do inside contrasting fabric on the inside of the pleat or or I'll do the bottom trim here. So you can vote out on Facebook. You can leave it in the comments if you want and let me know which one you prefer for me to make. That would be cool. Okay. And so um, anything else to consider? Well, I think you should also consider the fabric. Based on the type of fabric that you choose, you'll get either a more tailored look or a more relaxed look. Silk, those type of fabrics will have a more relaxed look than something that's a little more thicker and stiffer. Okay. Uh, but both, but they all are, it's a, will look great. So, and I think that is it. Notice that this balance here is installed up close to the ceiling. This adds a nice height to the window. And, um, and I think I'm definitely going to do that as well. So let's go over to my window. It's a really crappy, uh, it's a really lousy um, photo, quite honestly. Uh, let me move this down so you guys can see it better. So it's, it's kind of a poor quality photo, but you'll you get the idea here. So here is my window, and there is the ceiling line right here. It's really hard to see, okay? But um, okay, let me get the, I'm putting my pencil here, and I can draw. So this this is my ceiling line right here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to install my valance at the ceiling. So uh, if you know you're going to install at the ceiling, then you don't need to install your dust board ahead of time. But if you're not, if you're going to install your, say, your dust board, your valance here, you need to install your dust board first. And I'll be showing you how I do that or, ref or reference videos I've already made on how to do that. And you want to do that so you get a more accurate measurement. So I need to find out my finished length of my shade and you know approximately where I want it to end up and then how wide I want it to be. So I will be measuring from the ceiling down to about mm, about here I think. I think I want the, the the once it's gathered at the box pleat I think I think I want it that line to be about right here okay and what do I mean by that? This about, about right here right where the rings come up, that's a good guideline for me. So I'm going to refer to about there is what I want. Now I gotta tell you, for a London shade, because you have extra fabric that gathers at the bottom, getting an exact finished length is extremely difficult. Okay? So you can see that it, you know, almost a, maybe a foot almost of fabric could be added at the bottom of that one measurement that I was pointing out. So you need to kind of account for that. If you're if you don't want a lot of the window to be taken up, then um, you know maybe that line needs to start about here, 
and then allow for the extra fabric to, to come down, okay? So you kind of have to just take a best guess at this and, and drive for it, okay? You're going to learn as you go. Sometimes you just don't know until, until you play around with it. So I think I want the, the box pleat to come in just a little bit inside of the uh, window frame. So maybe here and here approximately, okay? So my box pleat is going to come down here and it's going to come down to here, right? And then it's going to swag down here. And I think I want the board to just be about two inches outside of the window, okay? So these are my, uh, it's just outside the window, so maybe about right here on this side, okay? So I'm going to measure about two inches outside to here and two inches outside here, and that is going to be my finish width of my London shade. And then whatever board I get, I will make sure that I measure the width of that board. That will be the returns. And you want to get like a worksheet or something and write all those numbers down, okay? Because that'll help you. You, know, you got to take notes when you when you're making window treatments. All right. So that's my finish width here. Those are my returns there, and you know, and you know, I might want to get this measurement here. Um, I'll just call it L for right this very second. From here to about right here, just as a point of reference. Okay. And then I need you should account for six inches for each extra pleat that you want folded up here. So if you look back at that photo again. You know, I could see maybe one, two, three, four extra pleats there. So you want to count six inches for each pleat. So that's about 24 extra inches. So let's just say that we were going we're gonna to do the exact same thing. So it's going to be four extra pleats here. And so six times four is an extra 24 inches of fabric that's going to be gathered up there. So you might as well take a note of that. All right, and so I think that's enough information for me to, to now plug that into my formula and figure out what my cut width of fabric is going to be, my cut length of fabric, and what that's going to be, and then I'll be able to know how much fabric to, to buy when I go to the store. And I'll do that in another video, but I just wanted to kind of talk you through how you think about, you know, designing your shade. Now, the other measurement that you should get is once you decide how far in you want your your uh, box pleat to go, you want that measurement as well. This one right here. Between the box pleat and the front edge of the shade, you want that measurement, how far in you want that box pleat to go. Okay, I'll call it B for demonstration purposes. Okay, now if you're on a budget and you're worried about how much fabric you'll need to buy since you need an extra two feet of fabric here, you could always shorten this and say you only want three pleats or, you know, but I would not recommend going any less than three pleats because then you lose the point. You lose that, that appearance of a raised shade. That is just what a London shade balance looks like. It looks like a raised uh, Roman shade almost with, with the swag in the center. So I wouldn't go less than three. If you want extra fullness so that it looks even more professional, really really full you can always add more you can make this the full length of this window and just divide it by six inches you know and um so you could go you know one two you know if it was full measurement here and you may end up with eight pleats which is a lot of fabric but when you gather all that up to here oh man it'll be beautiful really thick and rich lush uh window treatment and it will look like you paid thousand dollars per balance if you do something like that but the fabric won't be cheap so you need, to, you need to compromise to figure out what you can afford and what look you ultimately want okay so those are your measurements uh, finish with the the approximate length here you know account for the fact that it's gonna come down a foot longer probably when it's all said and done so make sure that's what you want the look to be on your window the return the how far you want in the box pleats to be and um, and then account for the extra fabric here for the pleats. And once you have all that, all that, make sure you have good, well-written notes. And then and the next video, when I actually get started, I will be sharing with you how I determine the cut dimensions of the fabric, what I need to do if I need to piece the fabric, and then show you a yardage formula so I can figure out how much 
how many yards of fabric I'm going to need before I get to the store. Because I really want to get to the store um, on Saturday afternoon, and so I want to know. So you guys will be getting another video from me very soon, with, within 24 hours or so. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, if you're watching us out on YouTube, make sure you go over to simplesewingprojects.com or even better, go over to the Facebook fan page because that is where most of the videos will be posted first. Um, and that's it. I'm Jenny T. Thanks so much for watching.